What's up guys, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I know that you might uh, uh, be a stalker, maybe you're an investigative reporter and you need to record things. I picked this up because this looks like a typical uh, uh, remote control for a car, but it's actually a CCD camera. So it shoots video, takes pictures, has motion detection. I just wanted to see how good this thing is. On the back, it has some stats here. It looks like it goes up to, uh, um, you know, some pretty nice... Uh, resolution 30 frames per second I am guessing even though it says FTP uh, video format AVI so looks like it says it could record up to a couple hours now I don't really have any particular need for this but I just liked the idea of thinking that I was James Bond as a kid let's go ahead and unbox this sucker here so here it is and I thought we'd just shoot some video with it and see if it's useful now I, you know, I don't know, like I said, what practical use you might have for this, but uh, you might have one. Uh, looks like, first of all, looks like the kind of the edge is kind of covered up with this adhesive plastic. And I don't know if they have a schematic here. What, oh, let's see. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. So after you get that out, looks like you have a, a CD with um, probably some software. You also have a mini USB cable, which is a, probably how you charge it and or transfer the data. And then you have the user manual here. So one of the things that I was gonna say is that, it'd be nice to know where all the things are on this. So here is the, here's the little layout and here is the keychain. And you can see that already, I mean, I literally just unboxed it. It's kind of like a piece of black plastic. Now I kind of pushed it back down. I feel like this is the indicator, the key, which does flip out, which is interesting. Overall weight and size, and at a glance, it certainly looks like a GM type of uh, flip out key. This could kind of pass for a legitimate Kios remote. So this is an actual legitimate remote. Uh, the button's in the same place. This one's for my GMC Terrain. You've seen that car before. And roughly the same size, the plastic material is roughly similar. You know, it doesn't have quite the same button layout. And it's a little bit more uh, shapely than this one, and maybe just a smidge bigger. But the keys do flip out on the same side. Now, there's nothing on this key with, like, grooves or anything to uh, duplicate the fact that, you know, this, is a, this one's a real key. But... You know, it's good enough, although if you looked at it this side, you'd probably be like, oh, it's a blank. And on the back, now I don't have the cover on here, but this one says GMC, and then this cover would fill fit back in here. And so uh, it would just have a smooth backing. It would actually probably be slightly more realistic if it had like a VW logo or something like that on it. But uh, thickness are roughly the same too, just a little bit thicker. Everything's kind of a little bit bigger, I think, to accommodate the electronics inside. But it's not quite a facsimile. At a glance, it wouldn't look necessarily fake like a camera. There's also a slot for a TF card, but I actually bought a SD card, I think. This, it doesn't come with one, I think. But I, if I'm right, the SD and TF are the same thing, so I picked up a 16 gig class four card here which we will install that was this only... little slide off back here which looks like it'd be a place where you'd install batteries uh at first glance it doesn't really look like there's anything there but if you look here on the side what it does is it opens up um access to uh the the port for the mini usb cable and then also the tf card slot now it's a little uh, you wouldn't necessarily think it because of this this kind of door right here that covers that up once this backing's on. So you can see there, you have to take off this backing like that, and that uncovers the ports there. So let's go ahead and put in this SD card and charge it up. Into power, this little indicator light on the front does go on, and it looks like it's kind of violet, purplish right now. So leave it plugged in and see if it changes I'll plugged colors. in here a while and now this indicator light is showing me blue so I'm kind of guessing that the thing is fully charged so let's go ahead and uh, try it out so I've been playing around with this little uh, spy camera a little bit and I'm probably not the first person to realize that uh, the instructions I usually come with these things suck 
And not only are they unclear, but oftentimes they are completely wrong. So I haven't been able to even figure out what the night vision thing about is about, but I have figured out how to take photos and video. And I think that's kind of the only thing that really matters. Now, because that's probably the only feature that you're ever going to want to use, I wish that it was the only option available. Honestly, it's like power on and one button for camera, one button for video camera, and power off, you know? But anyway, so to power the sucker on after it's charged up, you wanna hit this lower button here, long press it to come on. Now this red light will come on and then it typically will blink a little and then it will stay on, suggesting to you that it is powered on, ready to do something. Okay, now that light being on is fine at this point because you haven't done anything. It may be a little awkward though because you have a little red light on a remote when most remotes don't. The uh, top button here is like the night vision mode, and I'm not exactly sure how that works. This is your camera activation. If you tap it, like if I point it like this and tap it, it takes a picture, and the little light there goes on and off, suggesting a little like shutter effect. So if I did that, and now if I take this camping light here, and I try to take a photo of it, supposedly we have some pretty good shots. Let me take a photo of my face here. I'll take a photo of me. Okay, so there is the photo experience. Now to take a video, you actually want to long press this bottom piece here that same camera button. When you long press it, it flashes and then disappears. Now you're in kind of stealth camera mode. When you long press it, it flashes and then disappears. Now you're in kind of stealth camera mode. So this is when you can go in and interview that uh, corrupt politician. <laughs> I'm so redundant. Any politician and uh, record it and it's just going to keep recording, I believe, as far as I can tell. And then what you want to do is you hit it again to stop the video recording. So now the red light is back on saying I'm ready to do something. I've stopped recording. When I connect this to a computer, it does show up as DCIM. And then in that folder, you have everything labeled either as a JPEG uh, with the picture or uh, they're also labeled image when it's a video file, but you'll obviously be able to see that those are much larger files. And I'll kind of roll, the, roll those in here. One of the things that I will say about this is that at least the color quality on the pictures is not particularly good. It's very blue grayish, oh, but actually the resolution isn't horrible, but there is really a kind of a washed out color effect. Uh, I never could figure out how to make that better, but I would say probably in full daylight or under bright lights, that might be different. The other thing about the video is that there's a couple things. It's actually not too bad. The shakiness isn't too bad, but uh, a couple of issues, one, the color, same color issue that you have the washed out faded blue gray tint issue that that you do on the photos but the second thing is is that you don't have a, a fisheye lens you actually have a fairly narrow field of view narrow. and as you might be able to see on the video that we took here or i'll try to shoot in a little more is that uh, the video just is pretty narrow you can't get a lot in there so if you want to film something the the odd thing about it is you're either going to have to put the remote down on a table and because of where it's going to be you know, you're either going to maybe need to prop it up, you're maybe going to have to angle it down, you're maybe going to have to manipulate it with your hand, but it does work. And so I, I get that when you put something into a stealth little package like this, there's going to be some limitations, but I think a fisheye lens would have been a much uh, better one. Not here in the sunlight with the uh, spy camera here. So we'll go ahead and power it on by holding down this button. Red light comes on, it's going to flash when it's all set up and ready to rock. Cool, and now I am going to long press this middle button to go into camera mode. And now, and now, this is what the video recording should look like on a nice, bright, sunshiny day. Now, this is the direction of the sun, so we might be getting a little lens flare there, but if we're kind of perpendicular to it, 
This is the video quality of it shooting against the sun. What up? So, we'll see what that looks like as we review the video. And now the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to flip out the the key and just see if that interferes with the the camera shot at all because the the lens is actually fairly close to where the key sticks out I fear that it might be visible in the shot itself so we'll find all that out shortly so after using this a little while I will say that this is probably one of the best spy cameras in terms of concealability or camouflage because you know the spy pens they tend to look a little large they're a little weird to carry them around uh, there are other uh, spy devices out there like teddy bears and alarm clocks but you wouldn't carry them around this does do uh, a reasonably good job of replicating a, a key fob for a car as you saw the picture in the video quality isn't great and I'm not sure you know how to adjust that but what I have noticed is that on on these smaller cameras uh, especially outdoors, at some point they tend to white balance themselves. So you can shoot five, six minutes of video and sometimes then for whatever reason, boom, it figures out the white balance and starts taking actually fairly good video. So I don't know how to force it to do that, but it is what it is. I was never able to get any video or photos that weren't either kind of blue, gray, or magenta toned. And the video quality itself is pretty choppy, as you can see. There's, uh, it's not very smooth in terms of the frames per second. I'm certainly not getting, you know, a um, a really high frame rate on it. But I don't think it's meant for that. So if you have some need to capture some video, maybe you want to carry one of these around. Maybe, like I said, you're trying to. Uh, uh, bust someone, uh, you know, a uh, sketchy salesperson that's lying to you about terms of a contract or something. I don't know. Uh, but you might want to check this out. This one is UKU, and I picked it up on Amazon for about $44. So, yeah, they're pretty easy to get, and now you know how to use it. And knowing's half the battle. Peter Von Panda, out!